she was supposed to be discharged today. But the year of work is getting
Well, on behalf of Howard and Patty and family, uh, we, we want to thank you so much for coming. Some thoughts that rushed over Howard's mind last Thursday. What if Brother Harv and Sister Barbara did not set up Howard and Darlene and Patty to meet at the Goldhammer 60th anniversary back in Mitchell, South Dakota? What if, as a middle school student, Darlene had not gone to Bible camp and there heard the gift of God's grace and it really stuck? And she came home to be the family evangelist and the one to really seek that family in the Christian faith. What if uh, Darlene and Patty had not moved to Hayward? This would never have happened either. What if uh, Darlene and, uh, had not had the opportunity to be connected to Calvary congregation? What if uh, Patty was not a swimmer, more like her mom, who kind of avoided the swimming pools, but instead uh, she jumped head first into it, and the result is this family. So today there's a lot of what ifs that gather us together, but God had a plan, and it was not by accident that he carried it out to its full, and we've been partakers of it, all of us. Can I ask uh, how many of you are relatives of Darlene? All right, spread out a little bit, kind of congested. How about, how many of you are, were in Bible study groups with Darlene over the years? How many of you uh, were prayer warriors with Darlene? Okay, um, is there any other groups here? How about neighbors? Any neighbors of the Golan? And, yeah, our fellow believers in Christ members here at Calvary. God blessed the relationships that Darlene was able to make. And he blesses that relationship that God has made with each one of us as well. So I'm so glad that we could all gather together on this day of celebration of the gift of life that God entrusted to Darlene. Howard, uh, one day impress it upon me that in Lutheran worship we sing hymns. We do a few other things too. We get our calisthenics standing and sitting. And we also, in hymn singing, get to do a little bit of Lutheran yoga as we uh, belt out the hymns and then uh, join in together to inhale for another breath. And so he'd like to say, he was encouraging me to tell you to be sure not to hold back when we sing hymns. God. It's encouraging for your soul, but also for everyone around you. So, so glad you could be here. This is what Darlene wrote on 2002 to Patty. I guess she and Howard were going on some big trip. So she had this envelope marked, Patty, open it if we don't come back. I want you to know how much I love you. I believe I can truly say that I would lay down my life for you and your daughters if asked to do so. And I guess, Craig, you might be invited. <laughs> you have a wonderful husband, Craig. She did say that. Make every effort to guard and protect your marriage. Enjoy the moments and grow old together. God says he will never leave us or forsake us. His word is truth. Trust him to do what he says. He will. And look to him to direct your paths. Ask the Lord to open the Bible for your understanding. Be sure Sydney, Roxanne, and this was prior to Olivia's reign among us. So Olivia included anyway. Knowing the Lord and trust Him as He works in our hearts and souls for His glory and our good. So with that background, we have the opening hymn, which is I Know That My Redeemer Lives, and this is what Darlene wanted to have on her headstone. Father and of the 
Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is where Arlene's life began, and where I pray that yours has as well. In holy baptism, Darlene Ann Goldhammer Kellner was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all her sin. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We, we were buried in Do not let your hearts be troubled. 
you believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. But you know the place to the you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Here is a reading of the Holy Gospel. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord. Uh, Sydney, Roxanne, and the Lord. I don't know what order.
and the soccer game or a swimming or waterfall match. She was willing to come down whenever we need her. Even though she went through major back surgery, she will still climb down the stairs to play any board game with me. Nanny has also helped me keep my faith in God strong. She will always sit down and pray with me if I need it. Once, when I needed someone to pray with me about school and how I was going to do in high school, she was willing to sit down and pray and talk to me about it. I'm glad I did that because I felt much more confident going to high school. Nanny was a very important person in my life. She was constantly encouraging me to be the very best version of myself. She always made sure that I had the support I needed and always tried to find the right battle verse for each situation. A verse that Nanny always reminded me of when I was having a hard time was Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And I think she would all want us to remember this verse going forward from today. I will miss her now and forever. Thank you. Thank you.
For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. When the apostle originally wrote this letter, he was in prison. He was in trouble. Romans had him chained to a soldier 24-7. And yet, when you read this letter, it is not a letter of discouragement or despair. But rather, he continually sees he's won the battle, and it's a letter filled with the words of joy and rejoicing. That's the assurance that every Christian has, it too. Even though our body is wearing out, in some cases, it feels almost like a prison. We can rejoice because we know the outcome of our days. You see, Jesus had a purpose for our life. We are here for God's glory. You know what that's like? I do. I have grandkids too. Our kids and grandkids truly do bring life into our lives. Excitement and joys and pleasures. They have an energy that we depend on to help us not be all stick in the mud. They remind us again and again that love has faces and shines and smiles and all those things that are encouragements to each and every one of us. And Darlene felt that way about you girls, but about so many others of us as well, as she would remember us in her prayers, knowing that God had plans, yes, even in the midst of the difficulties of life. What a gift God gave to her at such a young age, in her middle school years, going off to Bible camp, who would have known one week would transform a life? And yet, that's exactly what happened. Darlene had the joy of grandkids. Our focus on life is like that of St. Paul's, isn't it? We don't get too excited about the things of life or too down when the things of discouragement come our way because we know in both instances God can use it to His glory and our good. We are not prisoners. We have the Master who's with us in all things. I remember Darlene, when her physical body was saying, you need to rest, would say, let's go to the garage and sit around with some old timers and share thoughts and hopes. That was something that drove her even to get up and get going for the day. And I hear uh, not long ago, Sharon, her second grade friend from Wisconsin, who came from Wisconsin, they grew up together in South Dakota, came and was able to spend the last week of Darlene's life, brought her husband Dwayne. And uh, Harv and Barbara were putting on a special banquet that night for the family. And Sharon said, you can't go as you've been sitting around here, you've got to get all dressed up. And they did. And she was able to go and be there for that last meal with the family. Have you discovered that God can use difficult times for His glory and your and my good as well? You see, it's in the valleys of life that we get to focus on Him. If we're on our flat on our back, there's only one place for us to look, and that's up. When we feel as though we're wearing out, and Darlene heard the doctors tell her, I don't know if there's much else we can do. You're kind of on your own. She wasn't on her own. She was with her Lord in God's hands, never alone. Do you know that God uses all things, the joys and struggles of life? I hope you've learned that or are in the process of learning that in the coming days. People who do not have that type of relationship with Christ see life so differently. They miss out on so much of the joys of life. Some have even said they feel as though they're floating alone in an ocean on a raft, don't know where they're going, don't know what the purpose of life is all about. What a waste of life. God never wants us to go through life like that. Or others describe it as climbing a ladder all their lives, and yet when they get to the top, they realize they've been on the wrong ladder all along. Darlene did not have that problem, and I trust and pray that you and I don't have that problem either that this grace that God has poured out upon us is revealed in a way we know we have Christ with us in all things, in every circumstance. 
God doesn't want us to be alone and forgotten. He doesn't leave us this way. He gives us a purpose in life. It is to help one another. One of the laws that we don't, I think, focus enough on, that's just listed in the Bible that Jesus tells us, he says, this is my commandment, that you love one another. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. How important that is. If we forget about that word love, what kind of a society and individuals and what kind of a life do we have? If we always hang on to stuff that should have been forgiven and forgotten and move on. You see, God wants us to have joy in this life. This is a celebration time today as we gather. And we'll be able to go and Howard's looking forward to the hugs he's going to get from all of you who are here today. Doesn't want to miss out on any of those. And two, the joys of seeing so many friends who could come together. We might say it's a difficult day, but it's probably the best day as far as coming to refocus on relationships that have come through our lives and we didn't get to see for a long time. Arlene learned very early on that God had given her a purpose. She knew that that purpose was also going to go on when he would take her to the eternal home. It would not end. St. Paul describes what is our gain. For the Christian, death is gain. For Darlene has one rest. But look around you. Darlene lives on in your hearts and in mine as we see all these familiar faces that perhaps we've forgotten in more recent years. I know I was going through my memory bank and the names are not always there, but I should remember. And I'm sure that Howard has the same situation. So help remind him. She's also now in a new glorified body. Immortalized, resurrected. Her death has been swallowed up in victory. Not only does Darlene have a glorified body, but she also has a perfect home a mansion that the Lord himself has made for her. Listen to Jesus' promise and the words we heard read a few moments ago from John 14. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me and my Father's house are many rooms. If you were not so, I would have told you I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. That you shall be where I am. Indeed, Darlene has a better inheritance. The inheritance she's left behind is here, but she has an inheritance with her gracious God. She now sees Jesus face to face, does not have to walk by faith. Today we gather for a win-win situation. Darlene, rest is one, gift from God, declared a saint of God because of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. See, Darlene never thought she was perfect, but she knew the God who loved her took away everything that separated her from him. And he promises to do that for you and for me as well. This gift of life that Darlene is now experiencing is for us as well. For Jesus came for you and for me. And now may that peace that surpasses all human understanding keep our hearts our minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Would you join with me as we speak the words that are spoken at the baptism of Christians? I invite you to stand if you would. From the times of the earliest Christian church, believers have confessed their hope and faith in God. We join to confess our faith in the God who created us, in the Son, who by his death and resurrection has brought us back to God, and in the Holy Spirit, who brings us to faith and supplies us with hope of our resurrection. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary,
Father, you have taken the sting of death away by sending your only Son to become sin for us through our baptism. So that the life Jesus lived, he now lives for us and through his death. He conquered sin and death for us. Therefore, enable us today to see how you have transformed the grave, the gate of death, into everlasting life through faith in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, grant to us as we continue in our earthly pilgrimage that we walk by faith. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, empower us to live as Christians so that we grow in our faith and trust in you. In all the circumstances of life, Lord, in your mercy, grant to all who mourn the sure confidence in you that we may cast our cares and anxieties on you because you really do care for us just as a good father cares for his children. Lord, in your mercy, give courage, gracious Father, to Howard, Patty, Craig, and family, that they may have the strength to meet the days ahead in faith. Give them the faith to know that in Jesus, you have a plan for everlasting life for those they love in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, Grant us the grace to entrust Darlene to your never-failing love, which sustained her in life. Receive her into the arms of your mercy. Remember her according to your gracious love, Lord, in your mercy. Thank you for sending Jesus to destroy death by his death and resurrection. Thank you for opening heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because Jesus lives, we too shall live, that neither death our things present, or things to come, shall be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And Father, we also thank you for traveling mercies you've given to so many to be able to gather here. And we trust, Lord, that in the coming days, we are remembering this time of your presence in our lives. Well, yesterday we had the opportunity at Lone Creek Cemetery to entrust God's earthly tent to His care and grace. And we heard the words, in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God, our sister Darlene and Goldham. We thank God for that gift and promise to each and every one of us as well.
so we'd ask you, Lord, to join us in this time of celebration. It's to you, it's to the life of Darlene that you gave to us, it's to Howard and the family. It's a time, Lord, of reconnecting and realizing that the greatest thing we can have is a relationship to you and to one another, especially through faith in Christ. It's to his name that we gather and now go. Amen.